So now it's officially been 30 days since I've owned my BMW 335 with the N54, and I'm gonna share with you the impressions of this car so far. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place, and today I'm... So some of the impressions are both good and bad. I mean, to be a realist, you have to accept the fact that while not everything is perfect, there are a lot of positives and negatives in ownership of this car. And now after a month, I can really share with you some of the things, what it's like to live with, some of the positive impressions, some of the negatives here. So let's get rolling into this. The first impression I'm going to share with you is the style. Now the style is very, very attractive. Just about every angle of this car is very attractive, has nice angles, nice proportions, and quite frankly is borderline sexy in a lot of perspectives. Another thing specifically with the styling that I like is not just that it's attractive, it's actually unassuming. So that means it's not really that in your face. I can drive down the road almost any given day and not really have too many eyes looking at the car. It's not collecting a lot of eyes. In other words, you can really drive around in these cars and while the people appreciate them for the looks and the style and the quality, it doesn't grab a whole lot of eyes. It's not like driving a Ferrari or some kind of high-end Maserati. These cars do fly under the radar and that is what I actually like, the unassuming styling. Now talking about something negative on the outside of these cars. One thing I've noticed in springtime here, there's a lot of gravel on the roads. That's pretty typical for these parts. Now I've had a lot of different cars in my time. What I am noticing though with this particular BMW and actually with some of the other BMWs I've owned as well, they're really susceptible to rock chips. Now I've had a lot of cars that can really deflect rock chips and not really take too much of a beating over it. This car seems to be especially fragile. It doesn't seem to take a lot of rocks to really take out chunks of paint and that's really, really disheartening. Of course, when you have you know, a car like this, you want it to look sharp all the time. And to be perfectly frank, regarding the rock chips, it virtually seems almost every time I take the car out for a drive, I find a new chip. And a lot of times you get those little ones that you don't really notice because they're so small, but these are significant chips. The kind that really, as you walk by, you really, really do notice it. If you're gonna drive a BMW like this, I would suggest getting paint protection film, which is likely what I'm going to do to this car before the rock chips get too far. I mean, this car was primarily summer driven and the car looks really spanky and I'd like to keep it that way. So I'll be looking at some kind of film or something like that. So another thing I'm very, very impressed, of course, is a 335 with the N54 engine. And of course they're known for their lacking in reliability. But I can honestly report to you guys, I daily drive this car. This car is not a garage queen. This car is not to be used only on Sunday afternoons. This is a daily driver and I can honestly report it has not missed a beat. So in other words, it starts the same every single time, never misses a beat. It warms up consistently. It pulls consistently. The power is always there. There's no unusual sounds or smoke. The car is perfect. It runs perfectly. And I know I would expect things along the way, but so far so good. After 30 days, I can report the N54 is truly a flawless engine tucked away beneath the skin of this wonderful 335. So another thing I love about this car that I've really grown to appreciate is the sound. And here I'm gonna roll the window down and we're gonna get a better listen to this. Because this car isn't really stock, it has a blow off valve as well as it has a muffler delete, it puts out some pretty interesting sounds. Here, let's sample some of that for you guys right now. As you can tell, it makes some really, really cool sounds. And it didn't take a lot of money. A simple blow off valve and a muffler delete, and you get a car that sounds almost like a race car. I love the sounds of this thing. And again, you would think that with time, eventually loud exhaust systems start to grate on your nerves, but in reality, it's growing on me. It doesn't have a significant amount of drone, but it definitely has that growl when you want it to be there. It's not so muffled like some of the stock versions that I've heard. These cars definitely sound really, really good. Now, another thing I've noticed, again, you know, after coming out of different cars, you know, even with the M5, it handles really well for a big car, but it is a big car. 
And of course I drive the X5 and that too is large and in charge and it handles well for an SUV, but it's not the same as a car like this. The three series cars are smaller, sportier, more compact. And as a result, you feel the sporting experience even more. This car doesn't look like a sports car, but it sure drives like one. And hence the name, the ultimate driving machine. These BMWs, particularly in the three series format, are really, really great cars to drive. And this one, when you get to the corners, it just hugs the road. Just amazing in the corners, on the straights. The car is tight and flat, and it really handles like a sports car. It handles like this car's on rails, and that's not a feeling I'll ever want to give up. So another thing that's really growing on me with this car is the overall sense of quality. It doesn't matter that it's a 3 Series. It really is in line with a lot of the other BMWs in the lineup. I mean, I have a 2009 X5, and this has almost the same level of trim with the leather interior, the leather steering wheel. We've got the wood grain dashboard trim. We've got a lot of the nice touches that you find in the upscale versions. You don't feel just because you're in a three series that you're slumming it. That really does have all the goodies from sports suspension, leather seats, heated seats, sunroof, power seats. And honestly, I'm not really in the mood to list the entire list of options for this car. But trust me when I say it's very well sorted and well laid out in terms of options. You can honestly drive this car every day and know that you're going to be pampered and catered to in terms of comfort with these cars. So another thing that I'm sort of noticed with this car is its performance. And it's a 335, so there's no secret with 300 horsepower on tap, zero to 60 time of about 4.7 seconds and a quarter mile of about 13.4. This thing is as quick as the old Porsche 930s. There's no lacking in performance, but the numbers are part of this. And the actual seat of the pants are an entirely different situation. Now, what I really, really like about these cars is that they don't suffer from a lot of turbo lag. Because it's twin turbos and they're smaller turbochargers, they actually do a great job of spooling up very quickly. And it's almost at the point where as soon as you dip into the throttle, the turbos are spinning. You feel like the turbos are loaded already and that you don't have a ton of lag holding things back. You put your foot into it and it's virtually go like right now. And honestly, that is a really refreshing feeling coming from a lot of cars that were very laggy. I mean, I had a Porsche 911 turbo that was single turbo. It had a huge turbocharger strapped to it and it was really fast. But you had so much lag, you literally had to wait 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000. And then you were out at about 3,500 RPM and then whoosh, and then you'd go. Well, this car doesn't have that. It's just a zing and it goes now. Now, on that note, there's something I've noticed. When this car's on the fly and you're really accelerating hard in second, maybe third, fourth gear, you're on the fly, you're on the highway and you're trying to do a pass, this car has really, really immense acceleration. It just goes almost just ridiculous in some senses. What I notice in first gear, the lag is minimal out of first gear and it essentially off it and zooms, it goes right away. But it seems like it holds back and I have to think that what happens is there's not enough load on the turbos in first gear or either that or engine management manages things, but it doesn't seem to have the big thrust out of first gear. Like it launches, it accelerates strong. But given the amount of thrust that you see in third gear and fourth gear it doesn't seem to be consistent from first like first gear doesn't seem to launch as hard as you would expect it to it's not until you sort of get into second gear and the car's got legs and you're allowed to let it run that's where you really feel it really building speed otherwise it's the first gear doesn't feel crazy quick it's brisk, it's nice, it's punchy, it's very drivable, but it doesn't necessarily rock you in the seat out of first gear. And so there's another thing, there's another observation I have. Every time I walk away from the car, I've noticed this. I've actually had some of you guys, YouTubers, ask the question, and I've had friends at work or friends at play 
relatives that have asked the question, is the car lowered? And it's not. It has a factory sport suspension. And that I have to say kudos to BMW, the way they dial in their suspension settings. Even my Lamborghini that I have at home arguably is a superior car in almost every aspect, but they didn't even get the ride height correct. These guys did. The ride height is perfect. If you look at the back wheels and the where the tires sort of meet the edge of the fender, it is perfect. They really dialed in the ride height perfectly. And honestly, every time you look back at the car, you, th you can't help but think, that's just the perfect stance, perfect. There's nothing I would adjust. It doesn't need to be lowered perfect the way it is. Another observation is, sure you can get these cars in a shiftable auto or basically straight up automatic transmission or a manual tranny. As well as if you get a 335 IS, you can get a dual clutch made, made it up with that. So dual clutch transmission is the best of both worlds. But outside of that, I honestly have to tell you, the manual transmission is the way to go with these 335s. Why? Well, you don't have to shift them a lot. The torque band produced by these engines are in such a way that you don't have to shift a lot if you don't want. As a matter of fact, it's very tractable. I can be in down in 12, 1300 RPM and zoom off in third gear if I'm at the wrong RPM and it'll still go without any fuss. The transmission is very positive, positive engagement. It's slightly rubbery, slightly notchy, but very positive and actually just a treat to drive. Very, very much like what I drove in a friend of mine. He has a Porsche 996 Turbo, very similar to that. And the last thing that really made a positive impression on me is drum roll, everybody. Actually, I'm going to tell you in the next video. So you make sure you subscribe, hit that notifications bell, and I hope to see you guys on the next video. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.